Heracles, whose name was later romanized as Hercules, was the greatest of all the Greek heroes. The story of Hercules is sad, a life of pain and hardship. And in this video, we are going to know the story of Hercules and his 12 labors. Hera, the wife of Zeus, queen of the gods and goddess of women, marriage and the family, was jealous and vengeful of her husband's many mistresses and illegitimate children. But Zeus didn't really care, so he kept cheating on Hera, and Hera kept taking revenge for Zeus's conquests. On one of many occasions, Zeus used his power to disguise himself as Alcmene's husband, Amphitryon. Unable to detect the imposter, Alcmene received the king of the gods in her bed. That night she became pregnant and later gave birth to two children. Only Hercules inherited his father's semi-divine status. Zeus deceived her wife Hera by putting the baby to suckle from her breast to reaffirm his status as god and thus grant him the great strength that characterized him. After Hera was tricked into nursing Hercules, she became obsessed with revenge. And since she couldn't punish her father, she would focus her rage on her son. She sent two snakes to her cradle, but Hercules immediately dispatched them with the strength he had received from Hera through her milk. Over the years, Hercules became a great warrior. In gratitude for expelling the Minions from Thebes, Creon, king of Thebes, offered his eldest daughter Megara to the hero in marriage. Hercules and Megara got married and had three strong children. The family lived happily together, but this wasn't happily ever after. It turns out that the jealous Greek gods don't let go of grudges so easily. Determined to make him suffer, Hera once again interfered in Hercules' life. Hera used her power to enter Hercules' head. He fell into madness and went mad with rage. Under the dark influence of Hera, he horribly murdered his beloved wife and his children. Worse yet, Hercules had no idea that he had murdered his wife and children due to Hera's trickery. When he came to, he was totally destroyed by his actions. Heartbroken, he set out to seek punishment for the horrible crimes he had committed. Our hero, filled with shame and racked with guilt, went to Pythia, the oracle of Delphi, to atone. He prayed to the god Apollo for guidance and was told to go to Tiryns to serve the king of Mycenae, Eurystheus, for ten years as atonement for his crimes. He was then tasked with performing a series of astonishingly difficult feats called labors that took place throughout ancient Greece. If he succeeded, he would not only atone for his crimes but would also be rewarded with immortality. Heracles truly despaired at the oracle's words, Reluctant to serve a man he knew was far inferior to him, but fearful of opposing his father, Zeus. Finally, he made himself available to King Eurystheus. Eurystheus originally ordered Heracles to perform ten labors. Later, we will see why there were finally twelve. The Twelve Labors of Heracles. Number 1. Nemean Lion. Heracles wandered until he reached the city of Cleone. There he met a boy who said that if he killed the Nemean lion and returned alive within 30 days, the city would sacrifice a lion to Zeus. However, if Heracles did not return within 30 days, or if he died, the child would be sacrificed to Zeus. Another version of the story says that he met Malorcos, a shepherd who had lost his son to the lion, saying that if he returned within 30 days, a ram would be sacrificed to Zeus. If he did not return within 30 days, his corpse would be offered as a mourning offering. When he found and shot the lion, shooting it with his bow, he discovered the protective property of the skin as the arrow bounced harmlessly off the creature's thigh. After a while, Heracles made the lion return to his den. In those enclosed spaces, Heracles was able to stun the beast with his club and using its immense strength, strangle it to death. During the fight, the lion bit one of his fingers. Others say that he shot arrows at her and eventually shot her in the unarmored mouth. After killing the lion, our hero tried to skin it with a knife from his belt but failed. He then tried to sharpen the knife with a stone and even tried it on the stone itself. Finally, the goddess Athena, realizing the hero's plight, told Heracles to use one of the lion's claws to skin the skin off him. When he returned on the 30th with the carcass of the lion on his shoulders, King Eurystheus was amazed and terrified. Fearful of the man's incredible powers, Eurystheus forbade him from ever entering the city again. Thereafter, he was to display the fruits of his labor outside the city gates. Eurystheus would not even personally announce Heracles' tasks, opting to pass as a herald. The king was so afraid of the hero's incredible power 
that he even had a large bronze jug made for himself in which to hide from Heracles should the need arise. Eurystheus then warned Heracles that the tasks assigned to him would become increasingly difficult. Number 2. Lernaean Hydra Heracles' second job was to kill the Lernaean Hydra, which Hera had specifically bred to kill him. Arriving at the swamp near Lake Lerna, where the Hydra dwelt, Heracles used a cloth to cover his mouth and nose to protect himself from poisonous gases. He shot flaming arrows into the Hydra's lair, the spring of Amamon, which was in a deep cave from which it only emerged to terrorize nearby villages. He then confronted the Hydra, wielding either a harvest sickle, a sword, or her famous club. But of course, as he lopped off each of her heads, he discovered that two of them would grow back, an expression of the hopelessness of such a struggle for anyone but our hero. Also, one of the Hydra's heads, the middle one, was immortal. Details of the fight are set forth in the Bibliotheca. Realizing that he could not defeat the Hydra in this way, Hercules asked his nephew Iolaus for help. Then his nephew came up with the idea, possibly inspired by Athena, of using a torch to burn the neck stumps after each beheading. Heracles lopped off each head, and Iolaus then cauterized the split open stumps. Seeing that Hercules was winning the fight, Hera sent a giant crab to distract him, but she of course crushed it under her foot. He cut off the only immortal head of the Hydra with a golden sword given to him by Athena. Heracles placed him under a large rock on the sacred path between Lerna and Elaeus, and dipped his arrows into the poisonous blood of the Hydra, thus completing his second task. Hera, upset that Hercules had killed the beast she had raised to kill him, placed it in the dark blue vault of the sky as the constellation Hydra. She then turned the crab into the constellation Cancer. Later, Heracles used an arrow dipped in the Hydra's poisonous blood to kill the centaur Nessus, but we will see this later. Number 3. Serenian Hind Eurystheus and Hera were very angry that Heracles had survived both the Nemean Lion and the Lernaean Hydra. For the third job, they found a task that they thought would spell doom for the hero. As it was clear that Heracles could defeat even the most fearsome opponents with his great strength, Eurystheus ordered him to capture the Doe of Chaeronea, which was so fast that she could outrun an arrow. One day Heracles woke up and saw the doe by a flash of sunlight on her horns. Heracles then pursued the animal on foot through Greece, Thrace, Istria, and the land of the Hyperboreans for a whole year. In some versions of the story, he captured the doe in her sleep. In other versions, Artemis told her to put down the doe and tell Eurystheus all that had happened, and her third labor would be considered completed. Still another version states that Heracles struck down the stag with an arrow between its front legs. King Eurystheus had given Heracles this task in hopes of inciting Artemis's wrath towards Heracles for desecrating her sacred animal. When he was returning with the doe, Hercules met Artemis and her brother Apollo. He asked the goddess for forgiveness, explaining that she had to catch him as part of her penance, but she promised to return him. Artemis forgave him, thwarting Eurystheus's plan. Bringing the doe to Eurystheus, Hercules was told that it would become part of the king's menagerie. Heracles knew that he had to return the doe as he had promised, so he agreed to give it to him as long as Eurystheus himself came out and took it from him. Then the king appeared, but just as Heracles released the doe, she ran back to her mistress. Heracles left, commenting that Eurystheus had not been fast enough. Number 4. Aramanthian Boar King Eurystheus was deeply disappointed that Heracles had somehow completed another gigantic task and was humiliated by the doe's escape, so he assigned Heracles another dangerous mission. According to some accounts, the fourth job was to bring the fearsome Arimanthian boar to Eurystheus alive. On the way to Mount Arimanthos, where the boar lived, Heracles visited Pholus, a kind and hospitable centaur and old friend. Heracles ate with Pholus in his cave and ordered wine. Pholus only had a jug of wine, a gift from Dionysus to all the centaurs on Mount Arimanthus. Heracles convinced him to open it, and the smell attracted the other centaurs. They did not understand that wine must be tempered with water, so they got drunk and attacked Heracles. He shot them with his poison arrows, killing many, and the centaurs retreated to Chiron's cave. Pholus was curious why the arrows caused so much death. He picked one up but dropped it, and the arrow struck his helmet, poisoning him. 
One version claims that a stray arrow also struck Chiron. He was immortal, but he still felt the pain. Chiron's pain was so great that he volunteered to renounce his immortality and take the place of Prometheus, who had been chained to the top of a mountain to have his liver eaten by an eagle every day. Prometheus's tormentor, the eagle, continued to torment Chiron, for which Heracles killed him with an arrow. The story is believed to be intended to show Heracles as the recipient of the immortality bestowed by Chiron. However, this story contradicts the fact that Chiron later taught Achilles. The story of the centaurs appears sometimes in other parts of the Twelve Works, as does the deliverance of Prometheus. Heracles had visited Chiron for advice on how to catch the boar, and Chiron had told him to lead it into the thick snow, which makes this work in the dead of winter. In fact, Heracles caught the boar, tied it up, and brought it to King Eurystheus, who was so scared that he crouched down in his custom-made storage pithos, begging Heracles to get rid of the fearsome beast. Number 5. The Augean Stables This task was intended to be both humiliating and impossible, since these divine cattle were immortal and produced prodigious amounts of manure. The Augean Stables had not been cleaned in over 30 years, and over a thousand head of cattle lived there. However, Heracles succeeded in diverting the Alpheus and Peneus rivers to wash away the filth. Before starting the gigantic task, Heracles had asked Augeas for a tenth of the cattle if he finished the task in one day, and Augeas agreed. However, Augeas refused to honor the agreement on the grounds that Eurystheus had ordered Heracles to carry out the task anyway. Heracles claimed his reward at court and was supported by Augeas' son, Phileas. Augeas banished them both before the court ruled. Heracles returned, killed Augeas, and gave his kingdom to Phileas. The success of this work was eventually ruled out because the torrential waters had done the job of clearing the stables and because Heracles was paid for completing the task. Therefore, King Eurystheus determined that Hercules still had seven labors to perform. Number 6. Stymphalian Birds The sixth job was to defeat the Stymphalian birds which were known to eat men, had bronze beaks and sharp metallic feathers that they could hurl at their victims. Birds were sacred to Ares, the Greek god of war. Furthermore, their droppings were highly toxic. They had migrated to Lake Stymphalia in Arcadia, where they rapidly reproduced and took over the countryside, destroying local crops, fruit trees, and even the townspeople. Heracles could not go too far into the swamp where they lived, because it would not support their weight. Athena, taking pity on Heracles, gave him a rattle that Hephaestus had made especially for the occasion. Heracles shook the rattle and startled the birds into the air. Then Heracles shot many of them with his arrows. The rest flew far away, never to return. The Argonauts would later encounter these creatures in their own exploits. Number 7. The Cretan Bull The seventh labor was to capture the Cretan Bull, the father of the Minotaur. Heracles sailed to the island of Crete, where King Minos gave him permission to take the bull and even offered to help him. The bull had been wreaking havoc on Crete, uprooting crops and leveling the walls of orchards. Heracles snuck up behind the mighty animal and then used his hands to strangle it, stopping before it was killed, then sent it back to Tiryns. King Eurystheus, who hid in his pithos again when he saw the creature, wanted to sacrifice the bull to Hera. She refused the sacrifice because it reflected the glory of Heracles. The bull was then released and roamed Marathon, becoming known as the Marathonian Bull. Number 8. The Mares of Diomedes As the eighth of his twelve labors, also categorized as the second of the non-Peloponnese labors, King Eurystheus sent Heracles to steal Diomedes' mares. The mares' madness was attributed to their unnatural diet consisting of the meat of unsuspecting guests or strangers to the island. The mares, which were the terror of Thrace, were tied with iron chains to a bronze manger in the now defunct city of Tirida. They were called Podargos, the swift one, Lampon, the shining one, Xanthos, the yellow one, and Dinos, the terrible one. In one version of this feat, Heracles brought in several volunteers to help him capture the giant horses. After subduing Diomedes' men, he broke the chains that bound the horses and led the mares into the sea. Unaware that they were man-eaters and uncontrollable, Heracles left them in the charge of his favorite companion, Abderus, while he set out to fight Diomedes. 
Upon his return, Heracles discovered that the child had been eaten. As revenge, Heracles fed Diomedes his own horses. In another version, Heracles, who was visiting the island, kept awake so that Diomedes would not cut his throat in the night and cut the chains that bound the horses once everyone was asleep. After startling the horses on the high ground of a mound, Heracles quickly dug a trench across the peninsula, filling it with water and thus flooding the low plain. When Diomedes and his men turned to flee, Heracles hacked them to death with an axe and fed Diomedes' body to the horses to calm them down. In another version, Heracles first captured Diomedes and fed him to the mares before setting them free. Only after realizing that his king was dead did his men, the Bistonians, attack Heracles. Seeing the charging mares led in a cart by Abderus, the Bistonians turned and fled. All versions of this haunting tale recount how eating human flesh makes the horses calmer, giving Heracles the opportunity to shut their mouths and easily lead them to King Eurystheus. In some versions, they were allowed to roam freely around Argos, having been tamed. But in others, Eurystheus ordered the horses brought to Olympus to be sacrificed to Zeus. However, he repulsed them and sent wolves, lions, and bears to kill them. Number 9. Hippolyta's Magical Belt King Eurystheus's daughter Admete desired the girdle of Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, which had been a gift from her father Ares. To please his daughter, Eurystheus ordered Heracles to retrieve the belt as his ninth great labor. Heracles set sail with a group of friends and stopped on the island of Paros, which was inhabited by the children of Minos. Heracles took two of Minos's grandsons, Alcaeus and Sthenelus, continuing on his journey and landing at the court of Lycus whom Heracles defended in a battle against the Babrysis King Migdon. After killing King Migdon, Heracles gave much of the land to his friend Lycus. Lycus called the land Heraclea. The crew then set off for Themyscira, where Hippolyta lived. Everything would have gone well for Heracles if it hadn't been for Hera. Hippolyta, impressed with Heracles and his exploits, agreed to give him the belt, and would have if Hera had not disguised herself and walked among the Amazons, sowing seeds of mistrust. She claimed that the strangers were conspiring to take the queen of the Amazons. Alarmed, the women rode off to confront Heracles. When Heracles saw them, he thought that Hippolyta had been planning such a betrayal all along, and she had never intended to give up the belt from her. So he killed her, took the belt, and returned to Eurystheus. Number 10. Geryon's Cattle The tenth labor was to obtain the cattle of the three-bodied giant Geryon. In the most complete Bibliotheca account of Pseudo-Apollodorus, Heracles had to go to the far western island of Erythea to obtain the cattle. On the way, he crossed the Libyan desert and became so frustrated by the heat that he shot an arrow into the sun. The sun god Helios, in admiration of his valor, gave Heracles the golden cup that Helios used to sail across the sea from west to east each night. When Heracles landed on Arethea, he was confronted by the two-headed dog Orthrus. With a swing of his olive wood club, Heracles slew the beast. Eurytion, the shepherd, came to help Ortro, but Heracles treated him in the same way. Hearing the commotion, Geryon sprang into action, bearing three shields and three spears, and wearing three helmets. He attacked Heracles at the Anthemus River, but was killed by one of Heracles' poisoned arrows. Heracles fired with such force that the arrow pierced Geryon's forehead, so Heracles had to drive the cattle back to Eurystheus. In the Roman versions of the narrative, Heracles drove the cattle over the Aventine Hill at the future siege of Rome. The giant Cacus, who lived there, stole some of the cattle while Heracles was sleeping, making the cattle walk backwards so they would leave no trace. According to some versions, Heracles drove the remaining cattle past the cave where Cacus had hidden the stolen animals, and they began to call each other. In other versions, Cacos' sister Caca told Heracles where he was. Heracles then killed Cacus and erected an altar on the site. Later, this place would become the Forum Boreum of Rome, the cattle market. To annoy Heracles, Hera sent a horsefly to bite the cattle, irritate it and scatter it. Within a year, Heracles recovered them. Hera then sent a flood that raised the level of a river so high that Heracles was unable to cross with the cattle. She stacked stones in the river to make the water shallower. When he finally arrived at Eurystheus' court, the cattle were sacrificed to Hera. As we saw before, Eurystheus originally ordered Hercules to perform ten labors. He duly fulfilled these tasks, 
but Eurystheus refused to acknowledge two of them. The slaying of the Lernaean Hydra, since Iolaus, Heracles' nephew and charioteer, had assisted him, and the cleaning of the Augean stables because Heracles had accepted payment for the work. The king set two more tasks. And before watching them, if you have come this far and you found the video interesting, subscribe, comment, and like it. For me, it is very important. Number 11. Golden Apples of the Hesperides The first additional job was to steal three of the golden apples from the Garden of the Hesperides. Heracles first had to catch the Old Man of the Sea, the shape-shifting god of the sea, in order to learn where the Garden of the Hesperides was located. In some variations of the tale, Heracles, either at the beginning or at the end of this task, meets Antaeus, who was invincible as long as he touched his mother, Gaia, the Earth. Heracles then killed Antaeus by holding him up and crushing him in a bear hug. Heracles finally made his way to the Garden of the Hesperides, where he met Atlas holding the heavens on his shoulders. Heracles persuaded Atlas to get him the three golden apples by offering to hold the heavens in place for a while. Atlas could get the apples because, in this version, he was the father or related to the Hesperides. When Atlas returned, he decided that he did not want the heavens back, and instead offered to deliver the apples himself. But Heracles tricked him into agreeing to stay in Atlas's place. According to an alternative version, Heracles killed Laden, the dragon that guarded the apples. King Eurystheus raged again because Heracles had accomplished something he had thought could not be done. Number 12. Cerberus, the dog of Hades. The twelfth and final labor was the capture of Cerberus, the three-headed dog with a dragon's tail who was the guardian of the gates of the underworld. To prepare for his descent into the underworld, Hercules went to Athens to be initiated into the Eleusinian mysteries. He then entered the underworld with the gods Hermes and Athena as his guides. While in the underworld, Heracles met Theseus and Pirithous. The two companions had been imprisoned by Hades for trying to kidnap Persephone. One tradition tells of snakes coiling around their legs and then turning to stone. Another that Hades feigned hospitality and prepared a banquet, inviting them to sit down. They unknowingly sat in chairs of oblivion and became permanently trapped. When Heracles had first pulled Theseus from his saddle, part of his thigh stuck to him, but the earth trembled at the attempt to free Perithous, whose desire to have the goddess for himself was so insulting that he was doomed to be left behind. Heracles found Hades and asked permission to bring Cerberus to the surface, to which Hades agreed if Hercules could subdue the beast without using weapons. Heracles subdued Cerberus with his bare hands and hung the beast on his back. He brought Cerberus out of the underworld through a cave entrance in the Peloponnese and brought him to King Eurystheus, who fled back to his pythos in fear. Eurystheus begged Heracles to return Cerberus to the underworld, offering in return to release him from any further work when Cerberus disappeared again with his master. After Hercules successfully completed all twelve labors, Apollo's promise of an immortal life on Mount Olympus was still in the way of many difficult years. Hercules had to rescue the Trojan princess from a hungry sea monster and help Zeus defeat the giants in a great battle for control of Olympus before he could take his earned place among the Olympians. Hercules traveled to various places, one of which was called Caledon. Caledon is where Deianira lived. She was the daughter of King Aeneo and Queen Altea, which made her princess of Caledon. Hercules immediately fell in love with Deianira when he saw her. Deianira was beautiful and many men wanted to marry her, but she was not interested in marrying any of them. When Hercules asked for her hand in marriage, most of the suitors backed down. The only suitor who challenged Hercules for the hand of Deianira was Achilles, god of the river. Hercules battles Achilles and eventually wins Deianira's hand in marriage. Hercules and Deianira would travel to various lands after getting married. During their travels, they came into contact with a centaur named Nessus. Nessus was killed with one of the arrows Hercules used to kill the Lernaean Hydra. The arrows were still soaked in the Hydra's poison when she shot Nessus. As Nessus was dying, he told Deianira that her blood contained a love potion that could make anyone fall in love. And this could only happen when the blood was applied to her skin. Nessus convinced Deianira to save her blood in a vial to use on Hercules if he ever looked at another woman. This would keep Hercules faithful to her and prevent him from seeking her love elsewhere. One day, upon returning home from what would be her last adventure, Deianira gave Hercules a cape. He had covered it with what he thought was a magical balm that would guarantee her love for her forever. Unfortunately for Hercules, 
The salve was actually poison. When Hercules put on the cloak, he started to burn it. Unable to remove his cloak, Hercules was sure that death was the only release from this agonizing pain. And so, a huge funeral pyre was built for the hero on top of Mount Ueta. Just as the fire began to burn around Hercules, the gods looked down from Mount Olympus. At that moment, Hera finally agreed that Hercules had suffered enough. Zeus sent Athena to save Hercules from the burning pyre and take him to Mount Olympus in his chariot. Finally, the hero got his deserved reward, 